Welcome to Power Talk Radio, where you can listen and learn from celebrities, icons, and everyday hardworking women. Their stories will empower and motivate you to be the best you can be. Our host, Tonya DeCosimo, is the founder of Power, professional organization of women of excellence recognized, and editor-in-chief of Power magazine. She is also an author, columnist, and has worked successfully for 30 years in the advertising and publishing industry. Welcome to today's program. Here's Tonya. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Power Talk Radio. I'm your host, Tonya DeCosimo. And I have such a special and beautiful guest today. And her name is Sue Phillips. Now, ladies, we all have our favorite perfume, our favorite fragrance. Sometimes we smell something on someone and we're like, oh, I love that. And you go out and you buy that fragrance. But for some reason, it doesn't smell the same on you or vice versa. You smell great, somebody else goes out, buys that fragrance, and it just does not smell like the same perfume. But our fragrance expert is gonna tell us why, and she's gonna share the magic of the healing powers of scent and about repositioning to increase your business. Now, Sue Phillips is the founder of Center Prizes Inc., a luxury house of fragrance, she creates custom fragrances for men, women, corporations, groups, as well as presenting fragrance bars for large off-site corporate events, parties, and fundraising events. That's a mouthful. She has over 30 years experience. She is a fragrance and branding expert at Scentpreneurs, right? Ms. Phillips created and developed Tiffany Perfume, uh, Society for Burberry and many others, and she's created signature fragrances for many of the rich and famous, and she is here with us today. I can go on for an hour, but we'll let her talk right now. How are you? Hello. It's so lovely to be here. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I'm sorry it was so lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We love it. We love it. So, Sue, tell us, how did you get involved in fragrance? You know, it was really quite by chance. As a little girl, I yeah. always loved perfume because when my mother would go out at night, she would spray fragrance on and then her fragrance would linger in the air and I always felt comforted. So I think subliminally, I just felt wonderful about fragrance. It made me feel comforted. It made me feel mm -hmm. happy that I could have her aura in my room when she left to go out. And how I got started when I came to America, uh, 44 years ago, believe it or not, yesterday was my anniversary. Oh. I always wanted to be a singer and an actress. And I came to America, but at the time I wasn't a member of the unions. I didn't have a green card and I had to do something to get myself into this country. And I worked for an immigration attorney, got my green card. And at night I would sing and act. The reason I'm telling you this is because this is how I got into the industry. Okay. When I eventually I had left, um, I had got my green card. I left after a year to pursue my dreams. I mm -hmm. went to a headhunter and I got three job offers in one week. One was to work in a law company. And I said, that's not for me. One was to work in fashion at the time. I didn't feel fashion was important and I didn't have anything really to offer in fashion, but one was to work in cosmetics. And that was my aha moment. I felt that cosmetics and fragrance and theater, there was a great synergy. And mm -hmm. because I could stand up in front of people and speak in training. So they hired me to become the national training director. I had to learn about fragrance. I had to learn about selling to people who are going to be selling the product to the consumers. And it was a whole wonderful confluence of ideas. I could stand up and perform. I loved fragrance. They loved the fact that I could talk to people and they hired me to be the national training director. And that's how I started my career. Wow. And I went from Elizabeth Garden to Lancome and then to Tiffany and I created and developed the first Tiffany perfume. Wow. And I, I love Tiffany perfume. So tell us about the magic and the healing power that fragrance has. Our most powerful sense is our sense of smell. Right. Our strongest does our sense of sight, but the reason that fragrance is so powerful and it is healing and it helps you build confidence and it helps you think about your memories and emotion is because it is our most powerful sense. And when you smell something, uh, a familiar fragrance, 
it can actually take you back in life to a memory or an emotion or a first kiss or your first love or a newborn baby. And those memories are so powerful and those emotions are so powerful. And when you are feeling a little down and gloomy, Mm -hmm. The first thing that you can do to lift yourself up is to smell a beautiful fragrance. It lift, lifts you up. It makes you feel confident. It makes you feel special. And it also brings a sense of wellness, which is yeah. very important. That's true. That's true. So why does a scent smell good on one person and it might not smell good on another? So it really depends on your body chemistry. We've all heard of the term pheromones, but it goes beyond that because, you know, who you are as a person, if you're casual or sophisticated or sporty or whatever attribute you are, whatever sort of um, uh, behavior, um, so society uh, and socialization you, you have and you offer and you, you are, will depend on what kind of fragrance you want. So if you're sporty and if you're outdoorsy and you love the nature and you love happy, bright, sparkling, citrusy, natural fragrances, mm -hmm. you're not going to want something very heavy and bold because it's, it goes against you. And if you are that kind of outdoor sporty person, but the, the most popular fragrance of the season, let's say, is a very bold, heavy fragrance, it's not going to suit you. Yeah. And so if there will be the disconnect. So what we do is we give people a scent personality questionnaire to really help people understand their olfactory families and which fragrance families are suitable for them. And it's amazing. It works really, really well. It's very, very accurate. Now, I'm just curious. Do you wear the same perfume in the daytime that you would wear at night? Or do you change it up? <laughs> I mean, being that you're an expert in this field. <laughs> yes, um, I do change it up sometimes. Um, I do have my own blend, my own formula, which I love, which I've created, which really reflects who I am. So for me, it works for me during the day and at night. But okay. there are sometimes, you know, think about outfits. If you're going to a fancy, formal black tie affair, right. you're going to want to get dressed up and wear some sparkles and jewels. You wouldn't wear that outfit during the day to the office. Mm -hmm. So the same is true with fragrances. If you have a fragrance that is pretty sort of va va voom and is very overt and sexy and sensual and smoldering and deep, you don't want that for an office situation. Right. So it is a good idea to come up with two or three or four fragrances that reflect who you are, that are appropriate for certain occasions. Mm -hmm. So that when you go to the office, you can wear something pretty and nice and discreet. And when you go out at night, you can wear something a little bit more exotic and luxurious. Okay, good point. <laughs> so you are a powerhouse. You're an entrepreneur. You're a centrepreneur. I'm a, I'm a entrepreneur. <laughs> entrepreneur. Oh, you see that? Entrepreneur. I should have said an entre That's entrepreneur. I, I coined that term. So I'm an, yes, I'm an entrepreneur in sense. So I coined the term entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. <laughs> I, I love that. I love the way you say it. <laughs> so tell us about in 2008, you repositioned your company focusing on custom fragrance. How did this help expand your business? Well, again, it wasn't a plan. And I didn't sit down with a business plan and say, in 2008, I'm going to expand and go into custom fragrances. No, it happened because the economy changed. And I had been doing a lot of consulting under my company name, Centerprises. So I was creating all these fragrances and companies hired me as a fragrance expert to help develop their brands. Mm -hmm. In 2008, when the economy changed and shifted and crashed, the consulting dried up. So along the years, you know, having learned about fragrance, I realized that customization was going to be happening. I don't know how I had that. I had that foresight, mm -hmm. but I just felt that it was time to reposition. And I started to create custom fragrances. I'll just turn this off. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. That's okay. But what I did was I put a... a, a I put a, a business together of custom fragrances because I felt that bespoke was a terminology that not too many people knew, but it's a, a, a term, it's an old British English term, mm -hmm. bespoke meaning custom, custom, and it was really appropriate for clothing. It sort of referred to 
British tailoring. People would go to the British tailors and they'd have their own fragrance, their own uh, suits made. And I thought that that would be something interesting for fragrances. So, so I spent two years creating fragrances and then I started the custom fragrance business where I would offer custom fragrances for people, men, women, corporations, and so on. And people actually laughed at me. They said, what are you doing? Tupperware parties for perfume? Ha, ha, ha. Well, guess what? Customization now is such a hot trend. And think about it. We're on Zoom. We're mm -hmm. on custom. We're in uh, Clubhouse. We're in Twitter, Instagram, all these apps yeah. which really reflect our brand persona. And so I started the Custom Fragrance Initiative. It was really going so well. Everything was amazing. Uh, I had many, many celebrities find me and create fragrances for them. Jamie Foxx, Katie Holmes, Zendaya, as well as corporate events because everybody, most corporations are looking for experiences and team building events. Right. Well, everything went well until COVID happened. And then in August last year, I had to move out of the building. I had this beautiful perfume studio called The Centarium. Wow. Just an oasis in the heart of the city. You'd come down these cruddy little stairs and there was my beautiful perfume studio. Wow. But um, they have sold the building. COVID happened. And now I'm in a lovely pop-up boutique uh, on the Upper East Side in a beautiful location. Wow. Uh, and so I can meet with people. We do smaller events, obviously, because of COVID. But the thing that is so wonderful is that people are finding their brand Mm -hmm. ethos and it's how you look how you sound and also truthfully how you dress how you smell what brand image you want to project to people and fragrance is a part of that mm -hmm. so if somebody wants to start their own fragrance line what would you say to them i would say do some research it is not for the faint of heart mm -hmm. but it's a lot easier today than it was because today you can launch a fragrance online you don't need to go into the big department stores or the specialty stores if you have an interesting concept mm -hmm. um, and if you want to create a fragrance you know people usually find me or other you know fragrance uh, companies but i really help people to really fulfill their dream and so i don't require you know you to buy ten thousand bottles of fragrance i don't require 25 pounds as minimum I work with people. I give them a scent personality questionnaire. Mm -hmm. It really helps determine their olfactory family. I show them all the different blends. We take them on a fragrance journey. They select the blends that they like, and that becomes their fragrance. And if they love that fragrance, they can research it. They can give it to their friends to test, to try, to get some focus group results. And then they say, Sue, I love it. This is what I want to do. And I want to do 10 bottles or 20 bottles or 100 bottles or 250. So yeah. I don't require you to do minimums where some companies re really require 10,000 units mm -hmm. and you know, 25 pounds. So it's, it's an expensive initiative. It's a wonderful thing to do. Um, it's expensive because you need to know what you're doing. And if you don't know where to go, you can go to so many different companies and then right. you know, get, get foiled. But um, it's, it's both an art and a science. So fragrance, it's not just like going to the supermarket and picking an orange, a lemon, an apple and putting together and then you've got, you know, fabulous juice. It's much more complicated than that. How many, I mean, for, I don't know if there's like an average perfume that has a certain amount of, um, I guess you would say fragrances that go into it, vanilla, orange, like how many make up a perfume? So, that's a great question. So there are thousands and thousands and thousands of ingredients. But what I do is I tell, I, I have a whole, in fact, it, it might be on my website. If not, I can just share it with you. Um, and I, I liken it to this. You know, in art, you have three primary colors. You have yellow, blue, and red. Mm -hmm. Think about those primary colors and then the secondary colors and the tertiary colors and how many magnificent colors there are in paintings right. from those original three colors same thing in music you have an octave eight notes think about those eight notes and how magnificent pieces of music have been made with hmm. millions of jazz classics spanish whatever uh, music so the same is true in fragrance there are eight fragrance families and the fragrance families are the florals the citruses the woodsy the spicy the herbaceous the animalic the sheep and the um, woodsy 
So oh. that's a lot to consider, but I have narrowed it down to four main families, fresh, floral, woodsy, spicy. So out of those original eight, and then narrow down to four, there are so many thousands and thousands of ingredients that you can create to create some kind of a sporty fragrance or a fresh fragrance or a floral fragrance or a floral mm. oriental. And that's where it's, I, I say it's both an art and a science. Yeah. The science is knowing which ingredients to put together. The art of the fragrance is putting them together and expressing a beautiful uh, fragrance. Wow. You're, you're simply amazing, really. Now, <laughs> tell so, us about your book. Well, I'm very excited that my book has just launched. Yeah. How, to do, uh, how to choose it, wear it and enjoy it. You know, I've written so many articles over the years and I've been on so many shows where people have asked me. So a lot of the information in here really is easy reading. It really talks about fragrance through the decades, how you should wear fragrance, what yeah. fragrance, um, why certain fragrances are for men or for women and where to wear perfume, uh, some iconic people who have made fragrances. So I'm very excited this book. It's an easy read, but it's fun. It's, inter it's sort of very educational, but in a very wonderful way. I express it in a way that people can understand it. It's not filled with organic materials and too many you know, formulas. Uh, it just is tells you about the power of perfume. And um, I, what I'm doing now is also giving a percentage of my sales to Alzheimer's Association. Wow. Why? Because fragrance and memory are very connected. Remember you asked me about why is, why is fragrance so powerful and about the memories? Because yeah. well, our olfactive hub, our olfactive sort of our, where we smell fragrance from the olfactive hub connects to the limbic system. And it's our only sense that has a direct connection to the brain. And that is why when you smell something, it brings up certain memories. It triggers, yeah. It, it triggers, triggers memories. Yeah. And, and so, you know, sadly, my mother was an amazing artist and she suffered from dementia oh. and ultimately Alzheimer's. And so I've done many, many fundraising events because Alzheimer's is a, is a terrible disease and so many people's parents and everybody knows somebody who's had Alzheimer's. And if I can help raise awareness about Alzheimer's through fragrance, then I'm happy to do that. The other thing about uh, fragrance is it's very much connected to our sense of taste. So smell and taste are connected. And if you can't enjoy food because you can't taste it, mm. what will happen? You'll ultimately sort of not want to socialize. So that is why fragrance and, and perfume is so powerful because it has all these connections. And um, wow. I'm doing a percentage to Alzheimer's Association based on my book sales. Wow, you're amazing. You are really amazing. So being that you're so amazing and you're oh, a powerhouse, you. I'm going to ask you what the word power means to you. Oh, I like that. <laughs> so power to me, I'll tell you what power means to me. And I hadn't thought about this, but power to me means confidence. Okay. If you're confident in your self, in your field, in your projection of yourself to people. Yeah. That means you, that means for me, you're powerful. People sit up and take notice. Yeah. Um, it's, it's wielding power in a very authentic, positive way, as opposed to a very negative, terrible way. Oh. Uh, if people are on a power trip just for, for, to power, you know, to, to put themselves on a level that is above everybody else and wield it in a, in an unnatural, terrible way, that to me is very, very negative. Mm -hmm. But being powerful, I think, means that you're confident and it has an aura of power, but you don't have to tell people. It is an aura that just, you know, sort of reflects who you are. And by the way, fragrance can do that. By wearing the right fragrance, you can feel strong, you can feel confident, you can feel that it reflects who you are, and you yeah. can feel really happy and powerful in that. Well, you know, it's true because I mean, I've we've all passed by somebody and you're like, oh, that's the best scent ever. Or you've passed by somebody and said, oh, my God, what are they wearing? So 
the one that smells great, you do. You feel that sense of power and confidence. Yes. So good answer. Love it. Yeah. Well, we are so happy to have you part of Power Magazine. I'm thrilled um, to be here. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. And just tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you. Well, thank you so much. So my website is suephillips.com. I also have my company, Centerprises. So you can find me on centerprises.com and suephillips.com. And the wonderful thing is that through social media, you can find me on Instagram at Centerfully Sue, the real Sue Phillips. Wow. I'm on Clubhouse these days with at Centerfully Sue. Um, actually, if you just Google Sue Phillips fragrance, I'm sure I'll come up because I've, I've been in this industry a long time. So there's a lot of information about me. <laughs> Well, you look too young to be in the industry that long, but. <laughs> well, it's, thank you. It's, it's thanks to my mother. My mother had great skin and she gave me some great tips. You know, she's, she was an amazing woman. In fact, I have to show you, I dedicated yeah. this um, the first two pages Aww. to my mother, Grace Phillips, and to my amazing Beautiful. daughter, who is actually changing the world. She uh, was a Peace Corps volunteer and then a Fulbright scholar and she's doing leadership training. And I say, she's changing the world and I'm making it smell good. Wow, we got to put her in Power Magazine also. Yes, <laughs> but my oh. mother always said to me, she said, Sue, take care of your skin. At, I don't care how tired you are, always clean your skin at night yeah. and moisturize. And I've done that and it's really worked. Well, you're beautiful inside and out, thank Sue thank Phillips. Thank you. thank you for being with us today. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Tonya. I love you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. God bless you. Take care. Bye. Bye, Sue. Thank you for listening to Power Talk Radio. We hope you were inspired by our show today and look forward to our next episode featuring another empowering woman. To learn more about being part of power, go to powerwo.com. That's www.powerwoe.com and follow us on social media.